Hey guys and welcome to Scott's Spot. This month we're working on photography and how to get your home ready to sell. Uh, today we're here with Randy who's one of the best photographers in the business on for real estate. We hire him to do all of our work out there for listing your home. Randy wants you to tell us a little bit about what you do and how you do it. Well Scott, thanks for having me. I'm mm -hmm. excited to be here today. Uh, be glad to discuss some tips and tricks to get your homes ready for photography, mm -hmm. to make it easy for your homes to be sold quickly. It's mm -hmm. not a long list, but it sure does make that home sparkle. Excellent. Because one of the things that really helps the home is the pictures. Because you got to get those pictures out there. They've got to look good. That's what draws people to the home itself. Uh, Randy, tell us some of the things you do because I know you got a lot of gadgets on there. Yeah, I've got a carbon fiber tripod that I use for stability when I'm taking the photos. You'll see a little yellow level up on top of my camera. And I also use a factor inside my camera. A lot of people will use automatic what we call white balance. And then the rooms can sometimes be blue or yellow. And I move that to the blue or yellow side depending upon what the room has. So I try to balance those colors out. You know, uh, buying a home and selling a home is an emotional thing. So I try to make the home look warm, accepting, but you don't want too much golden in a home. And blue is cold. Pay attention to what colors you have in the house, how your windows, the sunlight outside, and different things. Absolutely. Well, that's why I have him do it because I just point and shoot. All right, now you told us a little trick or two. Tell us how you're going to go about and actually take, take the photos of the house. I usually start with the outside. So you always want to make sure that all of your shrubbery, your landscaping, everything is down low, showing the house. I've shot some homes that have a lot of big tall shrubbery that hide the home. So uncover, uncover the front of the house. Uh, get some flowers and put on the, the porch. Things that, that make the house look, once again, warm and inviting. Make it look younger also. Yes, take, big take bushes short down. bushes mm -hmm. down. Now, if there's patios or decking, then I try to get a shot from the deck to the doors that enter into the home, then go against the home and shoot out off the patio, especially if I can get some chairs and I can lower my camera down to give that view of what the homeowner is going to be sitting in that chair and see, Absolutely. especially if there's fabulous views. Mm -hmm. And we've shot some houses with some awesome views. And then I move to the front interior or front entry door. I always shoot a walkway, if it's, especially if it's really manicured and nice. Mm -hmm. But if not, sometimes I just get the front door. So make sure you have a nice wreath, welcoming wreath, maybe a little pot or two on either side of the door. Right. Uh, turn on that front porch light because mm -hmm. that gives the warm feeling inviting you in. Okay, now that we've walked through the outside, let's take a look at the inside and how do we take care of that? Well, the first thing we do is when I show up and I'm getting ready to shoot the exterior is go inside and turn on all interior lights. I don't use any flashes. I use all the natural light from the windows and the light bulbs and lighting that's in the home. Oh, really? So what you want to do is make sure that all your light bulbs work and make sure all your light bulbs are the same colors or as close to possible. If I've got a lot of different colors in one room, it makes for a long night of editing to try to balance those colors out. The human eye does not see that but my camera is very sensitive to all those various colors. I usually start with an entry for your shot, especially if you've got a nice entry doorway, staircase, mm -hmm. uh, you know, chandelier hanging down. Mm -hmm. I have various techniques that I can use. I can either shoot my camera horizontally or I can turn my camera vertically and take a series of five shots and stitch them together, just depending upon what we want to showcase in the home. Then I do at least four shots around the living room to give you all four angles of the living room, if I can. Some living rooms have a lot of couches and furniture in them, Absolutely. so it makes it hard to get into the corners. But with the camera and the lens that I have, I can usually capture that living room very well. From that point, I either move to the dining room or the kitchen, whatever is next. So I try to capture the kitchen itself mm -hmm. unclutter the kitchen counters. That's the biggest thing that I see when I'm doing a home. You can have your coffee pot there. Uh, sometimes a knife block is good, but if you've got a little bowl of fresh fruit to set out on the end of an island, uh, have a pot of flowers on the kitchen table, it just kind of sets the room off. And then I show the dining area, and then I show how the two combine. And even if there's a, a position where I can shoot the dining room kitchen, and shows how it exits back out into the living room, which most homes have. So I try to capture that 
to show how you can move around through the house and show the openness of the home. And then I start working through the bathrooms, bedrooms, uh, master bathrooms, walk-in closets. You know, that's a big thing with the walk-in closets. Absolutely. Make sure they are uncluttered, they're open to show that expansiveness that they have. Mm -hmm. Laundry rooms, you know, get the laundry out of there. You can have a couple of things of detergent sitting on the counter. Sure. That just shows what the room is used for, but mm -hmm. You know, uncluttering your home is the biggest thing. Absolutely, because buyers need to see that this is going to be their home, not your home. So the less that's on there of your stuff, the more they can see it being their home. Okay, what are some of the other things folks can do to get the house ready? The best thing to do is just to stand in the room and look around. You With live fresh in fresh eyes. Fresh eyes. You yep. live in that house. So take the list that Scott will supply you that I provided to Scott that gives you some tips and tricks. Take a look at the living room really, really hard. The mantles on your fireplaces. You've got lots of things up there. You've got pictures. You've got trinkets. Living there for years, things just add up. Add so up. you really need to get maybe a mother-in-law or somebody over there that can look at things differently. Yeah, get the neighbor across the street. There you go. Come over and say, hey, I'm going to have photos made. Tell me what... I need to pull out of here. Open the room up. Show that, like you said before, this is going to be their home, not yours. That comes back to that emotional thing. Yes, you are emotionally attached to everything in that room, yeah. but sometimes things just have to be put in storage to get your house ready for sale. The kitchens, look at where, if you've got pets, is the dog food bowl over there beside the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. All your kids' artwork, is it on the refrigerator? Mm -hmm. Uh, how much paperwork is laying on the kitchen table? Computers, laptops, iPads, iPhones, the plugins in the wall, and remove those. Uh, dust, vacuum, and sometimes you just need to move rugs around. You know, move some furniture around to open up the room. If you've got all the furniture back in the corners and tucked, and there's a big open floor, but I can't get back in that corner to show how big that room is. Okay, now we're going to talk about a subject that gets a little touchy for people because they love their pets, which you should love your pets. But I hate to tell you, not everybody loves your pets. Well, some of the things we need to do, especially during showings, is get these pets out of there, get them away. Somehow we got to figure it out if you want to sell your house. Uh, I was going to have Randy talk a little bit more about the things he needs while he's doing the, the pictures and photography uh, having to do with the pets. Go ahead. The biggest thing is is to move their bowls, put them away. Uh, if you've got crates in the living room, please, you know, I know that's where they sleep, that's where they stay. But even during the showings and things, you've got to have them out of the house anyway, so why not remove them for me to do the photos? Uh, furniture, look for dog hair. Go over your couches and chairs, go over the carpets. You know, just take a really, really, really hard look. Pick up all their toys. They have, they have toys hid everywhere. Uh, look around the outside of the yard. Where have they got their water bowls? You know, uh, how nasty and dirty is that area where the doghouse is? Uh, you know, I have my pets and I love my pets, mm -hmm. but I make sure that I pick up my yard because when a potential buyer is walking around in the backyard, mm -hmm. he does not want to step into something. <laughs> So, and, and litter boxes for cats. You know, hide them, move them. I know cats are very particular, but and if you want your home to sell and you want me to photograph it in its best light, you've got to move those things. This is, I have seen people cut showing short just because they hear the dark dog barking and makes them nervous. We want them to relax and enjoy the experience of walking through your home. And I know you love these pets. They have their own pets they love, but your pets aren't their pets. So we have to kind of think it, think about it that way. It's, it's tough to sell a home, but with a little bit of work on your part, you can make your home sell quick and sell for more money. All right, guys. Well, thank you for joining us for Scott's Spot. Uh, that's going to wrap it up. I want to thank Randy for coming out here and giving us some tips and helping us understand how important these photos are for your house. Now, if you have any questions for me, or, uh, or questions for Randy, his information will be on the screen as well as mine. And you can also go to sellyourspotwithscott.com and write us an email. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. There you go. Thank you very much, and we'll see you all later. Don't